In this video I will show you how to complete a shift, rotate, and scale in your Leica Captivate controller. I'll be using Leica Captivate version 3.5 and we are here in the middle of the fall, October 2018. So a shift, rotate, and scale is often necessary when you want to orient data, computed data, from your CAD files in the office to field ties. In this case, we have a simple two lot subdivision where we need to recover some of the property corners and maybe stake out some of the property lines. So in this situation, we've done some reconnaissance in the field and found five property corners. And these are labeled on the plot you see in front of you as IPF for iron pipe found. And these using point numbers 60 through 64. In the office, we took the deed descriptions and in our CAD program, we computed that information. And you'll see that listed on the plot in front of you as point numbers 1000 through 1014. So this data, well, the data was collected in the field using a GPS on a real-time network. And so we're going to take the computed plat data and orient it to the field ties. So we'll, we'll move over to Leica Captivate to do that. So I've opened up Leica Captivate. I have a job here, 08 August 16 perk. And let's just take a look at the job. I'll flip over the tile, go to view and edit data, and you'll see that we have our field ties here, point number 60 to 64. We also had point number 100 and 101. These were uh, uh, con GPS control points that I set on the project. And then you'll also see that we have our uploaded points starting at 1000. And I just assumed a coordinate system in my CAD computations and you'll see that we started those coordinates at point number 1000 at 100,000 and 100,000. So uh, to give you a look at that, we'll go to our 3D viewer. Up here to the right is our field ties. Down here to the left are our computed points. And so what we want to do is to do a uh, shift, rotate, and scale to move the points here from 1014 to uh, 1000 to 1014 up to our field tie. So I'll press OK. We'll go down on our screen and, all right, and captivate and we'll select Kogo. We will then select shift, rotate, and scale. I'm going to set my method to manual entered. Now, in some pre-evaluation based on the evidence in the field, I had found that that point number 61 of my found points should be oriented to point number 1000 in my computed map. And then also that point number 64 uh, that I had found in the field should be oriented to point number 1009. I've done some uh, inverse computations and found out that the field distance checks the computed distance for about a tenth of a foot. And so this will give me an opportunity to orient all of my computed points to my field ties and then to do some search evaluations for additional property corners. So again, let's go through the process of doing the rotation. So we're set to manually entered. The first thing I need to do is I need to add the points that are going to be rotated and moved. In this case, I have a group of points and this is just something to consider as you're thinking through the process of doing your computations. Um, that you want to be able to move points in a group. So what I can do is I can hit my function button and go to a point range. And so I'll tell it that I want to go move points 1000 to 1014. And I'll press OK. And that adds all of those points to a list to be moved. Now if I need to move individual points or add individual points to the list, I can select add one. And then I could select from my point list, other points to be added to the translation and rotation. Or if I wanted to move everything in the file, I could do add all. But in this case, I just want to move the computed points to my field ties. So I'll press OK. So now I'm going to do my shift and my rotation. In this case, I can either do Easting, northing, and height differences. I could do a bearing distance and height difference, or I could do two points. So I'm going to select to move point number 1000.
to point number 61. Now one thing I do want to point out, uh, if you do use this method, it will also uh, adjust the height. And uh, for my computed points for my CAD file, I did not have an elevation, so you might want to come back and correct those elevations back to, uh, uh, back to zero. And then I want to set my rotation. Uh, this is critical. We are going to, we do have uh, either a user entered method or computed method. If I do user entered, then I can just uh, enter the rotation. Or if I do computed, I can actually inverse from my field, from my computed information to my field ties. So what you want to do here is set your rotation point. Now this, this is a place where it gets critical. You want to set your computed point here as your rotation point. So that in this case would be point number 1000. So I'm going to hold 1000 to point number 61. I'm going to hold the azimuth, the existing azimuth in, in my computed points between 1000 and 1009. And then I'm going to set a new rotation angle to be the field ties of point number 61 to point number 64. So to do that, I select my existing azimuth and I press inverse. And I'm going to go from point number 1000 to point 1009. And I store that information. And then I'm going to set my new azimuth to my field ties. So I'll select inverse again and I'll go from point number 61 to point number 64. And I'll store that and you'll um, you don't see a rotation angle there, but what I can do, uh, just one other thing to note, if I press scale, I'm going to leave my scale at 1. Um, you could, if you wanted to scale the distances there, uh, compute it by, in, by um, setting two distances and it'll calculate a scale factor from that. But in this case, I'm going to leave that as, as user entered. So the last thing I need to do here is press calculate. And then this gives me the option to store the points in my current job with the original point ID. So I could store the points in another job or I could add a prefix or a suffix to the point. In this case, I am going to store them with the original point IDs. I'm going to overwrite the, or delete the original points if I click on summary, it shows me how much these are being moved. If I look at 3D Viewer, it will actually show me how the things are going to be moved before I accept the solution. So in this case, I could zoom in on point number 1000. If I continue to zoom in, uh, you can see that there my iron pipe found number 61 is underneath. If I zoom back out, zoom down here you can see that my point number 64 and 63 are overlaying point number 1009 1010 if this looks okay I can press store it tells me my new points are going to be created you sure you wish to do that I'll say yes and it says these points are already exist in this job so I can go ahead and select yes all to overwrite it tells me that 14 points have been created I'll press OK back to my main menu by going home and I can go over to my 3d viewer zoom extents now and you see that everything is overlaid if I want I can do some checks here if I click click again I can highlight those two points and select them if I hold my stylus down on my screen I can go to Kogo and inverse. It shows me the point number 1000 and point number 61 now overlay. Same deal. We'll zoom out here again. We'll zoom in on 1009, 1010. Select, hold my stylus down, go to Kogo and inverse. You'll see that these two points now check each other for a tenth of a foot. As I noted, you see there is a height difference here. The heights did get moved up uh, 
uh, for my points 1000 through 1014. You can continue to check. And again, all I'm doing is just uh, any time in like a Captivate when you have points overlaying each other, if you tap on the points, you'll see that they separate like they did here. And it gives me the ability to select one of these points individually. Hold my stylus down again, go to Kogo, inverse. We have an 1100s check here between point number 1010 and point 1063. And we have one other point that we can check here. 1007. Let me select that. Select here. Hold my stylus down. Kogo inverse. And we have a 1700 check. Now, you may be able to get better results by changing your base point and your orientation. And that's obviously something you can evaluate with each data set. But this should give us the ability now to go back to the field and from our real time network or with our total station to stake out the points that we haven't yet found and see if they're there. Thanks for listening.